Ready when you are. Good. Zora Magdaros. He's an enigma, isn't he? An incredible creature, a giant moving volcano tortoise, given a less than incredible fight, so he's remembered, well, less than incredibly. But the thing is, if we go by bulk, by just general volume, by weight, not length, He's the biggest monster. He's intimidating. He's an elder dragon. He fires massive volcano death balls. He is powerful. Incredibly powerful. In fact, arguably one of the most powerful elder dragons. <laughs> Are you serious? And while I'm not about to include him in what I'm doing today, he does help set up what I'm doing today. Which are the most powerful Elder Dragons? We've done the weakest, but of course the flip side is just as difficult to identify. Now obviously it should be said, the Black Dragons, yes, each and Everyone! of them. I'm not actually sure why I wanted, why I, why I set up that clip. I just, I like listening to that guy yell. Everyone! Cause you know, it's like, hey, out of all the people that watch my videos, Who's the best? Everyone! That's right. You're all the best. Anyway, I'll move on. The Black Dragons are, of course, eliminated from this because, ipso facto, they are the strongest monsters and therefore the strongest Elder Dragons. If I did include the Black Dragon, this list would quite literally be, All right, so our top five most powerful Elder Dragons are uh, in at number five, Dimorellis, in at number four, Relatrion, in at number three, Fatalis, in at number two, Crimson Fatalis, in at number one, White Fatalis. Okay, thank you very much, and goodbye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos drop. Which isn't really... Ideal. So, ignoring the Black Dragons, who are the five strongest Elder Dragons? Well, coming in then at number five. This was by far and away the hardest decision to make on this entire list. It really, really was. And basically, I have five contenders for it. Nawa, Shagaru Magala, Shara Ishvalda, Yamasukami, and yes, actually a little bit of Zara Magdaros. Now, any of these five could probably make it here. They really could for their own reasons. Now, we're obviously, you know, Rampage Sauce, that's an apocalyptic monster army event. Pretty ridiculous. Shagaru Magala can spread the frenzy for miles and miles and miles around and make an entire landscape a desolated kingdom of death. That's a little bit ridiculous. Shara Ishvalda, his singing, crumbling mountains, devastating the landscape, an apocalyptic event that needs to be stopped and also is charged with the crime of those eyes! Yamasukami, vortex tornadoing entire forests into his mouth, accidentally destroying entire settlements by just passively sucking them up into his mighty maw, a floating mountain nigh unstoppable. Zora Magdaros, again. I mean, he was about to destroy the entire new world by dying in the wrong place, though I guess that's technically not him, but still, his sheer size, he could pretty much just walk through Dundorma, the headquarters of the guild, and not even notice that he's done it. It's kind of actually ridiculous how easily we dealt with him. So, basically, as much as this might be a cop-out, you can imagine this entry as, yep, this is position 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... And you can kind of pick your poison here. All five have a claim, and I really struggle. If I had to commit, I would have to go with probably Shagaru as spreading an unstoppable, propagating, essentially zombie apocalypse X situation is the most world-threatening thing, even if the creature himself is not as powerful as, well, the rest of the list. So next up, the rest of the list. Coming in at number four is Nakarkos! Basically, laser squid. And I mean, laser squid. Look, okay, laser squid isn't enough of a reason to give him the fourth strongest non-black dragon, Elder Dragon, though that laser is used to shoot airships out the sky so he can go over to the corpses strewn about the place and, I mean, eat them. But still, 
There needs to be more, and indeed there is more. He is absolute devastation to any ecosystem he finds himself in. So this basically means that it's like Devil Joe on steroids. Rising from the deep sea, heading to the land, finding a lair close to thriving nature to call his own. Then systematically designated miles and miles around, and then working from the outside in as he consumes every living thing. His bluey mucus is nigh inescapable as you are dragged to become part of the decor. And I do mean part of the decor, because, look, this monster is exclusively found in a map called Wyvern's End. Why is it called Wyvern's End? Because he's killed a billion of them there! He has turned it into Wyvern's End! You literally fight him on a floating island of bones, surrounded by walls of bones from all of the things that he has destroyed, big and small. That is a declaration of how dangerous this monster is. On to mention the fact that he can assimilate and use other monsters' abilities. The effortlessness at which he can obviously kill Glavinus and Brachydios, and while not, you know, crazy powerful, they're certainly up there, and then turn them against hunters. He is a very clever, full of utility, massive, powerful animal that will not hesitate to disintegrate you with raw dragon fury bolstered from the sheer volume of life he consumes and assimilates into his being. The Karkos is no joke. Next up then... <laughs> I mean, that already kind of sells the point here. It is our Lord Gog himself, praise be unto his tarry body. He is the largest flying creature in all of Monster Hunter. That already kind of makes him terrifying. But more than that, he is an ancient entity. As, you know, he has literally one of the first ever dragon eaters lodged in him. He slumbered and he awoke and he was hungry and in doing so, rampaged upon the fortress to consume the gunpowder found within it. But this is a monster who secretes this tarry substance that is also incredibly explosive, incredibly volatile, a superheated tar beam that can all but obliterate everything that it strikes. He is massive, he is powerful, and he is massively powerful. The sheer bulk to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with essentially anything on a pure physical level, but also the actual raw elemental fury to add that extra punch to his arsenal. You really don't want to be anywhere near this monster. For things that are small enough, just kind of existing near him, you're gonna get globbed with tar, and then you're probably never going to move again. When you are that intimidatingly massive, and also have the firepower to back it up, that is when you enter the serious upper echelons of Elder Dragons. So, what comes after even Lord Gog himself? I'm a slithery little snakey snake. I'm so slithery and sneaky because I'm a snake. How could it not be Dalamadur? And of course, as is implied, this is only a base version of the monster on this list. Otherwise, we just have loads of random subspecies and versions. So, obviously, Dalamadur, not Shah Dalamadur, but yes, Dalamadur, because like Duh. He is arguably the largest monster in all of Monster Hunter. The Serpent King Dragon, and long may he reign. I mean, long will he reign, because nothing can bloody kill him! If you had to choose a single monster that could fight and beat Fatalis, well, Dalamadur would not go far wrong as your choice. I personally think he's second most likely behind the first on this list, but still, we're splitting hairs. This is a ungodly massive creature with armor plating the likes we have never seen, that bores and carves mountains as he sees fit, that can rain down on holy Armageddon in the form of meteors while pumping out great bellows of swirling 
incinerating flame that decimate all they touch, having the strength to constrict, crack, and break any single creature in the entirety of the Monster Hunter world. A snake is an efficient, powerful, and deadly hunter. And then this one is that made colossal. The idea that anything could survive once Stalamadur is coiled around it is simply laughable. Now whether he can get the coil of course is another question, but the killing power of this Elder Dragon is unimaginable. He can burrow under seas to cross to islands, and if he ever turned his ire to a bastion of mankind, well it would be bastion for not much longer. They really are ungodly creatures that carry with them the gravest of warnings should one ever stir. And of course, you know, paralysis just to light on top of anything because of course he needed a way to subdue his prey through something other than overwhelming might. If Gongmazios is what happens when size meets power, well, Dalmadur is that again, but turned to 11, and I think it's hard to argue his position on this list, or at least his entry onto it, though you might disagree with who I've put ahead of him. It's, of course, our good old friend... <laughs> Safi Jeeva, the red dragon to Vitalis's black. He is unlike any other creature in the Monster Hunter universe. His command, control, and manipulation of pure energy is unmatched. And in a world run on bioenergy, in a world connected through this living essence that Elder Dragons can tap into, being the best at tapping into it is one hell of a mighty advantage. He might need to be in his nest to use it to its fullest, but there is no doubt that he could draw from it wherever he was, and all that would change is how much there is available for him to sup. The ability to near instantly heal grave wounds is already ridiculous enough, but then the ability to fire pure beams of refined dragon energy in its most clearest state is then again, something else entirely. Disintegration might not be quite in reach for any monster, but if anyone's going to get close, it's going to be Safi Jeeva. He is devilishly clever. He is aggressive. He also has quite the size, the bulk going for him, even if he's a bit smaller than some other entries on this list, but certainly no little mouse. He just has an arsenal that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with quite literally anything. And it is of my opinion that Sapphire of the Emperor might quite be the single most powerful expulsion of energy capable by any monster. Yes, even more so than Fatalis' World of Flames, because after all, that is only fire. This is something even more intense than that. Flames do accompany it, sure, but the sheer blast force and the energy that also ride on those explosive waves is something else entirely. And essentially speaking, you have to get some special monsters before they are surviving even one sapphire. I think everything on this list could, but not much could survive multiple. And in a world where you can drop one down the mouth of a dirty great big snake, well, that's going to be very sad. Now, obviously, it's not fair to like, yeah, well, you know, if a monster can fire its attack directly into the throat of an enemy, it's going to kill it. I mean, that would apply to most monsters with most elemental beamy type stuff, but it's a cool imagery to imagine Safi flying high above a Dalmadur as Dalmadur surges up mouth wide, ready to consume, and then just that moment, that... as it drops down into the snake before annihilating him from the inside. I think that is quite a fantastic, badass little set piece of a fight. Essentially though, while Sabi Jeeva isn't exceptionally strong for his size, he's still tr strong because of his size, but I don't think there is a higher level of just pure energy and therefore damage output in all of Monster Hunter than Safi Jeeva's command of dragon beams. Everything else that displays this level of power has a lot of recharge time, has a lot of build up, whereas he can just merrily fire them off back to back to back to back in overwhelming amounts to his heart's content, and that is hard to deal with 
for really anything. It really, really is. Now, of course, with these lists, ladies and gentlemen, they are for fun, okay? These are the Elder Dragons. All of them make up probably the top 40 to 50 most powerful monsters in the series. So being at the top or bottom of that doesn't really matter too much, and when it comes to strongest, there's a lot of arguments you could make for a lot of them. Probably a Matsu not being here is quite uh, the huh for a lot of you, and perhaps he could have got another tie with fifth spot, but that was already, you know, standing to be half the bloody Elder Dragon list at that point. He is definitely someone who was considered heavily for this list, but I think he lacks, lacks bow for the survivability, the bulk, the tankiness, and the raw output to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with those that I have mentioned here, despite definitely being an upper-level Elder Dragon. In any case, these are my choices for who I think the heaviest of heavy hitters are, and in a lot of cases, they're heavy, heavy hitters because they are quite literally heavy hitters. But I would love to know what you guys think, who your choices would be. And for now, until next time, like if you've enjoyed this, subscribe for more. A oh, good bye. And also please consider supporting the future channel on Patreon. No. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice. To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis when you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage is uh goodbye <laughs>